So you're, uh, you're probably wondering, am I graduating or am I just the kind of guy that likes to wear gowns? <laughs> Might be both, actually. <laughs> well, actually, today I am graduating uh, from a self-made master's, something I called the Leap Year Project, based on a simple idea that I could be a student again just by taking a few risks. Now, let me rewind for a second. Education has always been one of those really interesting topics in my family. I grew up in a Middle Eastern family, which meant I had three options. Become a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. And I thought I was going to become a doctor. And from the time I was seven years old, my mother called me Dr. Saad. <laughs> but thanks to some really great mentors and teachers, I decided to become a youth and family counselor. And I loved my job, and I loved those students. But a couple years into that job, I began learning about businesses that were using their products, their services, their profits to do good in the world. It was a category of business called social enterprise. And I was hooked on this idea of creating change by starting businesses and solving problems. And so I began asking around and seeing what would be a good next step. And, it, and the idea of an MBA continued to surface. And I thought, well, this is perfect. I'm 25, I have a few years of experience underneath my belt, and frankly, I could possibly get some of that education that I had missed out on, maybe in some of the prestige of not becoming one of those three professions. So I hit the books, and I studied for this crazy test called the GMAT. It's the entrance exam for business school. Whoever made that test should get an award for some kind of, I don't know, torture? I don't, I, I what? <laughs> And I studied like mad in the evenings outside of my job. But as I was researching the options and the programs, I began to wonder if the cost and, and frankly the options fit me. I didn't have the money to spend on an MBA and I didn't know if I was a classroom guy. It made me ask a lot more questions about education and what causes us to learn. Or maybe better yet, what causes us to stop learning? For me, I'm one of those guys that I learn best when I get uncomfortable, when I have to learn, when I'm pushed to learn. It's those, ex those experiences that make me, make me figure things out. And as I was looking at programs, it seemed like colleges made things a little bit easier. Well, maybe not easier, at least comfortable. They touted big buildings and amazing professors and beautiful dorms and great food and, okay, well maybe not the food part, but they had everything figured out for me and what I would do and what I should study and what I should figure out. It seemed like a great option, but maybe not for me. And then I remember on April 3rd, after several months, a light bulb in the morning. You know one of those moments where you wake up and you're like, whoa, I have an idea. It was really just the collision of ideas for me. I'd been thinking about all the different ways I wanted to learn or could learn if I wanted to learn on my own. And so I began writing down you know, all these different things that I, th I knew I could do. I knew I could probably do some interviews or do some reading and writing and, and probably do a couple of internships or apprenticeships and conferences. And there are all these different things. And I put them all on a sheet of paper. You know, it probably wasn't that spectacular. You probably would have written a lot of the same things as well. But at the top of the page, I wrote the Leap Year Project. Because I was, as I was looking at this page, I was thinking, if I try to do this, I'm probably gonna have to quit my job. Which is no small feat. I mean, this, is, this was a big deal. I was thinking about not going to a business, not going to another job, not starting something, not starting another business, not going underneath the umbrella of a school, but just leaving my job to learn. So I didn't do anything rash right away. I did a lot of interviews. I just started talking to people. In fact, that spring and summer of, of 2011, I talked to nearly 500 people about the idea of a self-made education, just to pick their brains. And almost every single one of them looked at me sideways, like, what? But as I was talking to them, we got, I got a ton of feedback about what, what things I could possibly do and who I should talk to. And then the best part of the conversation, happen when I ask them this. Okay, if you were me, what risk would you take to change your world, to change something for the better in your life, for your community? What would you do? Now, at first, 
the responses were quick. People brushed off the question, said that their time had come and gone, they had resp responsibilities, families, bills. There was no room for such risk. But then a little prodding, some pensive silence. And then, my wife and I have always wanted to adopt, so we'd probably adopt. Or if I had some time and space, I'd probably just finish my degree. I never got to do that. Or I've never left the United States, and I, I'd probably just do a service trip as I watch the news and see everything that's happening. Or something as simple as, I, I know volunteering is important, I've just never made the time. Their hopes were simple and lovely, and were confirming in me this idea that in order to learn how to create any sort of change, comfort would have to be compromised. So I went all in on this idea of forming a self-made master's program based on the idea of creating risks. And it was a simple idea. 12 months, 12 experiences. All around design, business, and social change. What I believe to be a really powerful triangle for creating change. Now this would take me from Chicago to China, Costa Rica to Cairo, LA, Seattle, Boulder, and of course Chicago. But before I tell you about any of that, one of my biggest challenges was I was leaving my job, which means I had to figure this out, cost. I mean, I don't have some massive trust fund, and FAFSA doesn't let you take a loan out for your own self-made degree, in case you're wondering. So I got creative. I asked 200 people to subscribe to the project at $10 a month. They would get to learn from my lessons and get to see what I was doing, and I'd have the means to run their project. Now, after several really interesting conversations about why in the world anyone should give me a penny, roughly 100 trusting individuals gave me just what I needed. But then, travel. How would I tackle that? I knew I wanted to leave Chicago, and that kind of stipend wasn't going to get me all, all the places I wanted to go. So one of the fathers of one of my students, who works for United, decided to give me all of his buddy passes for the year. I had standby flights, which was made for some interesting days in an airport, <laughs> but I had wings. Then lodging. That got a little interesting. I, um, Started with friends and family, whenever I, was, whenever I would land somewhere, see if I knew anyone that way. Or, if I didn't, I'd go to couchsurfing.com, Craigslist, Airbnb, sometimes just frantic, frantically posting on Facebook and Twitter. I stayed in everything from office spaces, to vehicles, to mansions. I was a vagabond, but it was okay. I was a student. Look, the cost of education has gone to spectacular new heights. And they say it's past the $1 trillion mark, which is more than our nation's credit card debt and auto debt. That's how much our student loan debt is at now. And at the risk of being booed off this stage, I think I've come to learn that learning ought to be costly. Where I think we've gone wrong is that we think it should mainly cost money. But aren't the most valuable things in life, don't they cost more than just money? And if we learn best through experiences, then perhaps money should only be part of the equation, not the focal point. What might be more important, however, is who you learn from and who you learn with. Now, I didn't plan all of the experiences all at once. To be honest, I didn't even know if the idea would work. So like anything that you start from scratch, I went one by one and started simple. In that triangle of design, business, and social change, I just started talking to people who might know other people in that arena. And from there, I just set up meetings and phone calls and sent e emails and just started asking people to give me a shot to work with them. Now, I had to communicate that this was not going to be an interview. This wasn't going to be a minimal internship. This was me wanting to join them in their trenches. I wanted to help them do something great. And I knew I had a short amount of time, but I was fully committed. And the best question to ask whenever I got into a space was this, how can I help? 
and there could be nothing beneath me. Sometimes this meant putting together desks or cleaning something. Sometimes it meant answering phones. Sometimes it meant strategizing, strategizing a new business or working on a, a digital installation. Anything and everything was an opportunity to learn because of this question. Now this question led me to all kinds of spaces and places. I started off in Dojo with Phil Tadros, a design agency here in Chicago. And it was the most awkward first day I have ever had. I walked in, followed him to his desk, sat next to him, and it was like an awkward first date. I mean, like blind date with someone that doesn't speak the same language as you. It was, it was awful at first. And so the office was under, construction, under some construction and I was helping out. And then eventually I learned that Phil had a huge interest in helping cause-based businesses get great design work. And so I helped them think through new ways that they could vet those kind of requests and then even brainstorm if Dojo could start a foundation that did that on a consistent basis. Now from there, I worked, in thread, uh, worked at Threadless, the Chicago company that's focused on community design and apparel. And I got to help with their community partnerships and learn how a business can be involved in a community by supporting festivals and events like this one and how they could stay small and helpful to a community. And then I even got to sit in an architecture firm with Sam Stubblefield, who pushed me on staff, almost literally, and made me work with him, made me, because I didn't know what I was doing, and made me work with him on different installations, learning about experience design, and how the way a space work is laid out, or how a space is laid out can work and feel, and how it can be a part of how you learn, and how you act, and how a team interacts. In fact, I even got to work at, on a space in, on, Microsoft's off, uh, on Microsoft's campus, helping recreate a lobby space um, on, on, for their new healthcare facility. What? <laughs> From there, I was in China, working on helping a, a, a new family startup think through how they could best ethically do international manufacturing and trade, and how they could get started and tell their story of doing good and doing business well. The list went on and on, and you'll just have to grab the book if you really want to know all the experiences. But the, what you need to know is that the time in those spaces is what taught me. Rubbing shoulders, being in over my head. I, in every space, I was, people who w w was with people who were smarter than me, more experienced than me, and sometimes it was overwhelming. But I learned to ask good questions, listen well, try things quickly, and doing so taught me. Those offices became my classroom. And those professors, and the professors were the people in those spaces. Look, that impossible task you're facing, that relationship, that business struggle or challenge, start by being a student. Ask good questions and just listen. I know things can seem daunting at times, but it's all right. Take it step by step. I mean, that's what education is about. Education isn't about education. It's about people, learning what they'll do in this world and who they'll become. That makes you a student. That makes me a student. But there was something still missing. I didn't have a community. I didn't have a class. You know, that idea of like walking through the hallways. I was missing that. And so, from the get-go, I decided that I would carry this question throughout the entire year. What risk would you take to change your world? It was, after all, a leap year. Something I didn't know when I called this project the Leap Year Project. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> the grand reveal. And so, I wanted to see how other people would interpret it. The year gave us a window. It gave us a space, and it even gave us an extra day. <laughs> so I asked some really good friends, talented friends, to help me build a website that where people could go in and tell their story of what leap they were going to take that year. You know, we had a deadline, and they had to, people had to do their thing by the end of the year. And now completing all of this and trying to manage all the social media of all this and trying to build this community would be a class all on its own. 
I remember thinking, man, no one is going to take me up on this. I'm, I'm a nobody from nowhere. Who's going to follow my little project? But I remember being so ecstatic getting the first story. And this girl, Liza Hevner, a girl who was working on Capitol Hill, who had been, who had been toying around with the idea of leaving her job to do a, a hundred day stint in Borneo, a deforestation project, stumbles on the project and, and gets that final nudge to do it and decides, decides to do it. And we stay in touch throughout the year. Or, or this guy, Nick Gaines, who for seven years had been thinking about finding his biological father and every time he got clues would get a little bit scared and would back down and decides that this year would be the year he does it. Not only does Nick Gaines go all the way through with it, finds his biological father, but they're now friends. Or this girl who has a passion for homelessness and a passion for running and is not sure what to do with the pair of them decides to bring them together and with a group of friends plans a citywide 5K as her leap year project and is able to give thousands of dollars to an organization who helps in the homeless community. I was no longer the only student. We became this community, this school of people who were willing to try to do anything that we could to create change, to do great things despite the cost. Some of our risks and leaps were simple, some were huge, some failed, and some succeeded. But together, we offered each other a space, a community, permission, knowing that whatever happened, there would be great lessons around the corner. I know risks are, are a difficult thing to kind of swallow and think about how, how and where and what and what, how can I make it happen? And often those are lonely moments. Trust me. But there's something so empowering knowing, when you're not, knowing you're not the only one. And knowing that it's not about what you accomplish. It's about who you become. Look, this isn't... This isn't about my graduation. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. This is about reinstilling imagination into the idea of education. And re envisioning our classrooms as office spaces, farms, coffee shops, studios, and our professors as CEOs creatives, entrepreneurs, leaders, and friends. About being students again, simply by seeing big problems and learning how we can navigate through them to great solutions. Now the Leap Year project is over. Leap Year's done. And that book is kind of turning into my dissertation of sorts. We hope to try to do the project again in 2016, 2020, and creating a type of social good Olympics around doing great things, a window, a space, an opportunity. But something else has happened. I was one guy trying this educational project all on my own. And doing so turned out great results. But there's been a lot of people who've pushed me on what else, on how, how we can help other people do the same thing. So today, for the first time, I'm announcing that we're going to start something pretty incredible, a school called Experience Institute. It builds on the idea that we can create a credible, valuable education through experiences, that someone can piece together apprenticeships, conferences, workshops, and volunteer experiences to create an education that will give them the tools they need to transform this world with an inventive spirit. Today, applications open, and we hope to take our class, our founding class, this fall. In the words of Paulo Freire, education is either used to bring about conformity or it becomes the practice of freedom, the means by which men and women discover how to transform their world. Today, we have this opportunity to see the problems around us, and rather than being over overwhelmed or frightened, we can become students again. To have high hopes, 
try great things. And as you do, that the, I, I would challenge to let those experiences teach you something new. Because the best solutions in our lives, our communities, or our world won't come from a few small steps. They'll come by moving past comfort, a good dose of cost, some hard work, a few good friends, and a few giant leaps. Thank you. Thank you.